Welcome back to the Native Stroke Show. Uh, I'm your host Richard Kuptong. In this episode, we have an award-winning film director, Tia Kamzakayer, and he is also the director of Dreams Unlimited and also the film Nana at Tell of Us. Tia, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, Richard. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's it's great to have you here in the show, and we've been wanting to have you for quite a long time now. Yeah, <laughs> and um, due to the circumstances that uh, we are in right now, so we have to do the virtual. I would like to sit with your whole team and then have a discussion, mm-hmm. but you know, sure. uh, the situation doesn't allow us to do that. So, uh, jumping right into the conversation, Tia, uh, how how do you get in- yourself into the filmmaking industry and the business itself? Uh, it was. I think for me, uh, it was purely passion mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. because I didn't have any formal studies in, in uh, I didn't have any formal uh, education in film school or mm-hmm. n- nothing of the technical sorts and all. It's all because of the love of cinema that I mm-hmm. got in filmmaking because I grew up watching movies. Uh, right from the black and white TV, mm. watching those old films to uh, then the color TV era came and then uh, we didn't have television but I was crazy uh, about movies so I used to go and watch in mm-hmm. others uh, place so the passion, the interest generated from there and yeah. uh, it continued. So I decided that um, this is what I wanted to do because it gives me the satisfaction. It gives me the happiness. So yeah, that's how I got into filmmaking. But I, even if I had that passion and interest right from the young age, I didn't have any mentor or there was no guide and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, I didn't know much about all the, uh, how to go about and also, mm. uh, I was not able to attend any film school. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think uh, somewhere down the line, uh, having attended, a, I mean, going back, if you, if you could have attended a film school, would it make any difference or do you think that you'll still be where you are right now? I feel that it would have made a difference, little bit, uh, mm-hmm. especially technically, uh, technical wise, mm. because what I do basically is direction, and mm. sometimes I write the script and also the dialogue. Yeah. So maybe technical wise, I'm very weak, and I have to depend everything on the technical people, mm. but. Uh, Having that upper hand, mm. uh, if I had gone to the film school, then maybe I would have had a better command in that area. And even in direction, also, I guess uh, I would have that upper hand. Yeah, yeah. I completely understand that. And, you know, y- you talk about a little bit about growing up and, you know, uh, watching black and white movies and then going to people's house to watch movies or cinemas, or let's say. Mm. So uh, with today's world, you know, with the internet and everything and OTT platforms, do you think that uh, the value of uh, everything in terms of whether you're creating content or whether you're creating movies, the value of that has really gone down? Do you think that... Uh, uh, because everything is so readily available, you know, if you want to watch a, for example, let's say uh, short films, uh, everything is available on YouTube or, you know, mm-hmm. you have a Netflix or Amazon Prime or other OTT platform, then, you know, everything is there in front of you. So mm-hmm. w- as compared to when you want to watch a movie, you have to go to your friend's house or someone else's house and then mm-hmm. wait for the time to be broadcasted, you know. So mm-hmm. do you think that the value, the the value of, the the cinema in itself has really gone down. I don't think the I can't say that the value has mm. come down. Mm. Uh, in fact, I believe that uh, the younger generation or in this uh, day and age, 
they have more opportunities and the resources available to them are uh, plenty. Mm. And for us, it was not like that. But the value of the cinema, I guess, for those who are passionate about it, I think the value remains the same. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And, you know, talking about technical a little bit, you know, oh, mm-hmm. probably when you are into filmmaking, when you start mm-hmm. getting into filmmaking, probably full HD quality or 180p might have been a dream for you, right? And <coughs> now we have 8K, 6K, and uh, what yeah. is the workflow of uh, Dreams Unlimited for you? Do you still shoot in 180p or you have upgraded to 4K? Uh, yeah, we have upgraded to 4K and uh, how how was it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, go, uh, in terms of you know, we have not actually, mm. yeah, we have not actually shot in four K mm. yet, but of course we do have a six K camera now, All right. and we are planning to shoot the movie hopefully mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with that soon. Uh, but yeah, we have shot our previous movie. With uh, one, uh, one zero, uh, one eighty p, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But HD quality. Yeah. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to shoot with four K. Yeah. In our next movie, because we have the camera. Mm-hmm. And you know the film that you have directed, uh, Nana: A Tale of mm-hmm. Us, was a huge mm-hmm. hit. You know, like you won. Golden Carlton Best Director at Edinburgh Fem- uh, Festival of Indian Films and Documentaries, mm-hmm. and also Best Film Notice at Twenty Twenty One Prague Cine Award. You know, mm-hmm. uh, with the background that you have mentioned, with no film school experience, having mm-hmm. this uh, winning this kind of award, how how did you feel? And um, you know, what was the first thing that comes to your mind, uh, and, uh, knowing that you have won Best Director? It was overwhelming mm-hmm. when I received the uh, Best Director Award because I didn't even know that uh, I was uh, in that competition mm-hmm. because I thought it was just, they are just screening the movie. They asked me for screening. So even me, I went to Edinburgh mm-hmm. uh, at that mm-hmm. time and the screening, the film festival, everything happened and in the end of the during the end of the festival, they announced the winners, so I was quite shocked and also a bit emotional because yeah. that was, the, I guess, the first time I won an award for mm-hmm. a film, actually. And uh, it was totally unexpected. So the joy was bigger. Yeah, and the happiness was bigger because I didn't expect it all. It was I thought it was just a screening mm-hmm. of the film, and they were screening Marathi films, Gujarati films, Haryan mm. films, and all. And yeah, those some of the filmmakers came to the festival. It was not a very big festival, but uh, some of the filmmakers came to the festival, that and they did, and everything mm-hmm. happened. So I was also there for three days uh, during the three days of the festival. So. Uh, it was quite surprising, overwhelming, and yeah, I thank God for and, that. And you know, in the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned that you know, if you would have gone to a film school, you would have uh, an upper hand with the technical abilities. Now that you have won the uh, international festival, film festival, as a best director, does that push you a little bit more and then give you the confidence that you required, or uh, how does that? Uh, turned out uh yeah it uh, it does give us that uh, push and that mm. confidence but it you no know, with uh with that win again or with that other wins for the uh, the other awards that we won for the film the expectation is also high for mm. the next yeah. one yeah. and people expect better and then higher that to be on the next level after that so that pressure is also there on me yeah, and my team. I agree. Yeah, so uh, it's both like 
it gives us confidence, but also the pressure of delivering again better mm. product and a better one uh, than the previous yeah. one. So it it, it both both ways yeah is there. So that's why it's been a uh, few mm. years now. Uh, I've been not able to come up with any movies. I, we have been planning for script. We have been writing, trying out this and that, but. It's been now around four years that I've not directed any movie mm. after Nana. Of course, we have been uh, doing continuous work or sh- short sketches and comedy gags mm. all in our YouTube channel, but not a feature film. Yeah, I mean, that. the higher you go, the higher you want to be, right? <laughs> because uh, the exactly. the challenge that you can face is yourself only, right? You can only challenge yourself because mm. everyone else uh, you can't really challenge because our circumstances are different uh, and we have our own differences, right? And and yeah. you know, uh, talking about uh, filmmaking, uh, when it comes to Nana, uh, the film Nana, uh, how do you? Uh, mm. What was the process that you follow? How did it begin? And you know. Uh, what was the challenges that you face? It uh, since it was based on mm. social issue, and since it was produced by the church mm. right from the beginning, it was decided that we will make uh, they want a film based on social issue. Uh, so we picked up the topic mm. of election at the time. So, it uh, when we talked about election, when we talk about election, the process, everything, or we see it clean election out here, the campaign that we had, uh, it can be, we can present in two different or two mm. or three different ways. We can present it from the point of view of a politician, the, everything that goes on uh, within that uh, politics, uh, the, the, or we can present it from the point of view of mm. a layman or a common man who is also a part, who plays a very important role in the process of election. So uh, we decided to choose the common man because we felt that it will connect mm. more with the audience. So, as a family, uh, as a common man, how your actions impact uh, your life, your family, or the society. So, that's how we chose the topic. And, yeah, the I, hardships and all, everything, uh, right from the crew members to the technical people, everything was done by ourselves like we didn't hire anyone from uh, let's say anyone mm. from Assam or Manipur uh, no one we just did it ourselves whatever experiences that we had our cameraman our sound guy even the sound we just mm-hmm. used one recorder uh, we recorded all the sounds through that and yeah and even the post-production mm-hmm. editing color grading everything we did it here in our studio in a very that's uh, very impressive <laughs> by the way in that computer so yeah so <laughs> thank you uh, mm. we didn't hire anyone uh, of course the budget concern is also there and also uh, it was our first like major movie uh, that we did and I like I said I also didn't have that uh, exposure exposure to uh, the bigger uh, mm-hmm. production and all. So I prefer to work in a uh, small production, small team, because I didn't have m- much experience uh, in with the technical-wise, with the sound, with other post-production things. I was very yeah, new to yeah. all that, actually. It's like, it's like my debut movie. And so... Yeah, we, everything we did it ourselves. And later in the post-production, I also realized that, okay, the sound quality needs improvement, but what to do? We have to, because we have made it. And even in the, the picture quality, some some glitches, I mean, there were some things which you realize we that would not, have done not everything can be fixed. we in have post, higher. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
And yeah, uh, you know, through that I've also learned that uh, next next movie if we do, we will hire some uh, light lights uh, people from either from Kohati. We will hire a sound engineer, a professional sound yeah, engineer. Yeah. No, you know all that so that because it really uh, makes a difference and. Yeah. I've learned that along the and, way. And also, I think, you know, uh, uh, when we looked at most of our Northeast uh, movie, uh, I mean, keeping aside Assam, uh, because they are already, uh, I mean, the the ground, the, the playing ground is very different when we talked about, when we include Assam, because mm-hmm. they are already there, I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if we, let's exactly. say, take Manipur or, you know, Nagaland or Mizoram, let's say, one of the things that I mm-hmm. see is that theater, uh, theatrical and acting, it's quite, uh, we mm-hmm. are mixing both of them very loosely. So most of the time when we look at the film that comes out from this stage, it looks like, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't mm-hmm. feel like we're part of it. We're just watching a drama or a theater being played out, right? Uh, a, a play mm-hmm. that is being played mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. So w- what is your thoughts on that, uh, how how do I reply on that? I'm a bit confused because, yeah, uh, maybe up to some extent what you said is true because um, maybe uh, Manipur also we have the very uh, I mean the culture of theater yeah. has been there for uh, mm-hmm. I guess more than hundred years and also they are very rich in that and maybe. That influence is there, maybe, or I'm not very sure about it. Uh, I'm just. But do you think we have come a long way in terms yeah. of acting <laughs> for films? Acting for films, I would say, particularly. I would rather say we still need to go <laughs> a long way uh, because we, of course, we have come a long way. But when we look, uh, we we when we look at other other films like. We cannot say like Bollywood, Hollywood, or I mean, Bollywood yeah, yeah. is very different from Hollywood, right? Maybe, maybe we are getting, maybe we are uh, very much influenced, or maybe let's say we are, yeah, we are mixing both, maybe I guess. So uh, we we are in India, so we uh, whatever we say, we are very much. Uh, influenced by Bollywood, even me as a young boy growing up, I grew up watching uh, Bollywood movies, so those things are, you know, ingrained in our mind, their acting, their films, and maybe because the influence, because of that also maybe, is there, I feel that maybe because Mm. of a little bit of that influence also we are mixing, because the Hollywood film is I mean, there are genres, but uh, the the yeah the way they present is a bit different. I mean, mm. even other world cinema, and this, of course, Bollywood. We can say when we uh, when we talk about art films and all, again, uh, we see quite a different one. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's all mixed up, I guess. So maybe we are being influenced so much by all that that we are. Like even me personally, I I uh, when we do YouTube videos or all that, we just like I guess uh, we don't think much, but we just go with the acting how it comes. It just goes with with, with that. So maybe we are mixing up with theater yeah. and yeah. Um, and all that. you know while we're talking about this uh, skill sets and all of those stuff, uh, you know, you're looking at uh, Nagaland, Manipur, and Mizoram especially the. We, we do have a lot of talents or skill sets, I would say. and uh, But but the problem is that we are not able to break the glass ceiling and go beyond, you know. or So what do you think, uh, according to you and according to your experience, is holding us back? And, you know, how can we address that? Uh, we, I mean, for many years, we are being typecast in... Bollywood, uh, we are not given any major roles in films apart from yeah. a servant, a gatekeeper, or maybe 
uh, no older is our our people like no these people are being typecast uh, most of the time but now i guess things are changing and uh, due to the ott platform i think many northeasterners are getting opportunities uh, to play character roles in the films and in web, web series and all so maybe uh, we have not been able to break the glass ceiling because of uh, being not being considered uh, no, uh, to mm. be in that major role category where you can play a hero you can play a, uh, maybe a uh, very very character role very but now i guess uh, things are changing and maybe it will take few years but i guess uh, with the uh, uh, with the incoming of mm. like ott platforms and all many north easterners are getting opportunity and they are being uh, found they are being recognized and even in big films i think yeah uh, we are getting opportunity now and so, i agree to you on the stereotyping of the cast and I you guess, know i'll yeah. get back to you on that but one of the question uh, i mean mm. on, on this topic uh, i might have a different an opinion in in the sense like don't mm. you think that you know our tribe or okay. we, we go by the uh, the moment we cross uh, northeast we go by states or you know we go by tribes or we go by community right so we we are the kind of people who like to stick with our mm. own right So, do you think that that plays a big role mm-hmm. in not being able to break the glass ceiling? Because uh, you know, for example, you go to Delhi. You the first thing you see is that who all are there from my village or from my community, right? And then you is there uh, my church avail uh, in the city, right? So we don't try to go out and mingle with other people, and then we just stick to our own. So, I, do you think that that plays a big role in breaking the glass ceiling? No, I don't think because it's because of that. Uh, of course, we we are all tribals and we have that uh, mentality, yeah. our own, our own people, our own, na, uh, our own, uh, like all that. But uh, I don't think it's because of that. Personally, I feel that it's just that uh, one thing is uh, maybe. Mm-hmm. the opportunity that we are not getting in uh, and maybe uh, because yeah. uh, not many are trying or mm. maybe the capability of a person uh, is lacking or, uh, mm. to reach to that place to reach to the heights because uh, we have seen at least one or two north easterner uh, going up to that level Uh, where he or she plays, I mean, uh, mm. let's say yeah. from Assam, there are so many, right? I mean, uh, those who have played a lead role, a heroine, or let's say from Sikkim and all, but I guess not, that's why it's, yeah, it's yeah. not because of that, uh, what you mentioned, but because I, of, I completely understand. Uh, and, Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can understand. I and you know, uh, he, he talk about a little bit about the stereotyping of, uh, let's say, you know, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, somebody also also said that uh, about the stereotyping of the casting. So I think the Bollywood also have a lot to do with uh, uh, mm-hmm. naughty stereotyping or you know uh, the race. Uh, like for example, an Abali would be fit for this kind of roles, or an Northeastern would be fit for. maybe a waitress or something mm-hmm. like that so that have a lot of things to do with how people look mm-hmm. at us right because uh, a movie has been seen by in terms of mm-hmm. grower of people and then if you display someone to be weak then mm-hmm. uh, people will take into granted that we are weak right although it's a subliminal uh, very very subtle mm-hmm. uh, message that is being given out but you know it has a larger impact when you look at the bigger mm-hmm. picture so i think uh the role reverse has to happen and you know uh the notice has to be given priority uh, i mean notice in itself is a big um, uh a burning topic right now 
So I agree with you on that point. And you know, coming back to uh, your venture or your 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 production. So uh, Dreams Unlimited has uh, started uh, putting out their content in two thousand eighteen December, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the last I checked. Okay, the sixteen. Okay, the, 16. yeah, yeah, two thousand sixteen. Yeah. And you have approximately now made around two hundred and ten videos, right? So looking back, you know, what 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 do you feel? Uh, mm-hmm. Are do you go back to your old videos and check them out sometime? I I do I do. Um, so I do go and check uh, our old videos sometimes and. Uh, Yeah, we uh, sometimes we feel that uh, mm. we have done better in the older days, and sometimes we feel that okay, yeah. we could have done. And that you have done a lot of uh, advocacy, uh, advocacy film sort of uh, uh, shorts where you know you collaborate with state department and stuff like that. So, how, when it comes to that kind of films, uh, how mm. much involved are you in terms of creativity, or you know, do you are you given the full creative uh, process uh, uh, creative freedom to do what you want as long as it drives the message home or the states has some sort of say in it saying that you know this has not this has to be this way this way this way yeah earlier in the beginning stage uh, the creative freedom was a bit less mm. and we also since it was our beginning stage within our queue or within uh Of course, we made our own script. We made it on our own, but mm. uh, lots of room were given uh, to those who are making us uh, sponsoring the video mm. for their involvement. Mm. But now uh, it has reduced a bit, and I also make sure that uh, okay. We will put the creativity, our creativity. Your message will be delivered at its best, but our creativity and the process has to be ours. Mm. So that's what uh, I always try to make a point whenever we get those videos. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes, you no, know, when too many people involved and yeah. and those who are not from this field, if they get involved too much with the All the informations and all sometimes it gets diluted and the creativity goes out of the window. Yeah, yeah, too much, yeah. Uh, too many cooks spoil the dish, right? Yeah. <laughs> I understand. And yeah. and our industry or the film industry is not something everybody can say whatever they want, right? It's not like exactly, exactly. you can't just uh, uh, it, it, you can't just say that okay, I don't like this, change it. You know, you have to redo the <laughs> whole thing, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and with the internet boom in the northeast, you know, uh, mm-hmm. I know that you have viewer across not only northeast but everywhere. Mm-hmm. So. Let's focus on Nagaland in itself and say and mm-hmm. looked at it. Do you think that uh, Dreams Unlimited have uh, brought about changes or you know some sort of a awakening or any positive impact that it ha- uh, brings? Do you see any of that? Uh, yeah, yeah, we we do see uh, through our message, uh, through our videos that many people have. Uh, we have got many people to. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if those videos were not there, then maybe just to think about those issues, those things that we have raised, would not have been. Maybe it would not have been thought about. But uh, through that awareness campaigns, uh, we have made an impact. Yes, and also not just that, but all the social messages that we deliver through our videos, I believe that it has made an impact among our people, not just our people, mm. but in the North East also. And also another very uh, positive uh, feedback that we always get is we uh, are making our videos in Nakamis and there are people yeah. who... Uh, finds it difficult to learn Nagaland. Those who are outside Nagaland, especially Nagas, those who are outside Nagaland. So, yeah. uh, 
whenever I travel, I get the feedback from the parents that my son or my daughter learned Nagamese by watching your videos <laughs> and all. I'm so happy <laughs> because because at home they don't talk Nagamese. Those who are outside Nagaland, especially mm. the, the families, especially. So that is also one thing, and also the Nagamese as a our um, medium of communication. Mm. Uh, the Nagamis, I believe that uh, through our videos, it has been lifted in a certain way. Yeah, that, uh, I agree. Through, through, through the coming of our videos and dramas and all, yeah. Yeah. Because not many people were, apart from the uh, Nagamis films, not many people were making any content uh, in Nagamis or of that sort, yeah. Yeah. And also, like, maybe the impact, uh, many, we have seen... After us, we have seen lots of lots of uh, YouTubers coming up mm. uh, with different contents, bloggers, news readers, and also uh, we have seen them growing. They are successful, so we are quite happy to see all that. Yeah, I agree. And you know, apart from uh, all these videos and you know, social putting out social me- messages, I think Charge also plays an important role in our community because we are a very, very close very much, uh, Christian much. community. So exactly, what exactly. what is your thoughts on, you know, what is your stand on modern Christian pop culture and other stuff like, you know, for example, there are Hill songs, Bethel Church and all of those. So I just want to have an understanding what where what is your thoughts on, the, on those pop culture of Christianity? Uh, I... I don't have any opinion on that and I don't know what I would say <laughs> about the pop culture of Christianity because uh, I don't give, uh, I think, much thought about mm, all that. Mm. Mm, otherwise, uh, we, as, uh, as a team, uh, we, we give uh, our, the success of our team uh, credit goes large part of our credit goes to the our church also mm, because mm. they've been supporting us right from our very initial stage and uh, even Nana gave us lots of popularity mm. and Nana was successful because of the church yeah. and uh, because of the church only we are able to you know, yeah. uh, come up to this stage so yeah personally our team we always uh, we are always thankful to our churches, those who have supported us. Um, yeah. And, and pop culture. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's, I it's, it's a tough question that. or, you know, it's a tough uh, mm. thing to mm. discuss because it's a very sensitive topic, I would say. Yeah. And exactly, exactly. Also, you know, since you're a full-time filmmaker now, and I know that, uh, I, I, I saw that in one of your video that you mentioned that you are full-time doing uh, the uh, Dreams Unlimited and also your, your pro- own project. So I w- would just have one question asking about this, uh, you know, what do you believe in job security? Uh, you know, in job security the de- is the deciding factor, deciding factor for in this modern day for someone to pursue what they want. Do you think that job security is a mm-hmm. factor? Uh, exactly, exactly. Uh, you need to maintain the balance of uh, following mm. your passion and then feeding your yeah. stomach because <laughs> and feeding your family because uh, however passionate you are, if you're not able to bring the food in the table to your yeah. family, then uh, what, what's yeah, the use, exactly. right? Uh, you can't. So it's very important to maintain that balance and. When I was in my uh, early 30s, like I decided to uh, pursue here, I decided like whatever it is, I'm not going back and this will be my profession and whatever I do from here, I'll do it with, I mean, I'll do this. Uh, So I've been doing that and so far, um, I would say it has given that stability, but of course, uh, uh, the thought of what next, what's mm. next, or uh, after what, 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 uh, what happens if my son grows up, and then uh, for education, for all that, all those things. When those things comes up, 
uh, to my mind, I also try to, whenever I'm free, I also mm-hmm. try to, you know, uh, do something uh, which will not hamper my work, but it will also help me in yeah, the other yeah. side. Nah? Uh, so I also try to work out and I always tell my team to do that too because you cannot just depend on one that. particular unless and until you're on the top <laughs> class level you, you can't maintain. Uh, yeah, so I also tell my team like of course you are an actor or you're a technical person you're doing this but this is not lame. Uh, we don't have like hundreds of projects mm. waiting for us we get one or two projects mm. then what's next that comes to our mind so you need whenever you're free you need to do small small business or you need to do something that gives you some income apart from your this uh, active uh, active work you need to have a passive passive income maybe in your paid times the passive income will be your main yeah. you have supporter. to diversify your yeah, income right yeah Exactly, exactly, and I stand strongly on that. It's, I'm, I'm doing. Uh, I'm here in Films Unlimited. Uh, okay, we are doing YouTube and we are doing some projects and all. But one day, if no projects comes to us, uh, you know how much yeah. YouTube pays uh, the creators. Unless and until you have that million, million subscribers uh, in this level where we are. We know that uh, in Naglen or in Northeast, it's a good number. But unless and until you have that high number, YouTube doesn't, all, uh, you know, it yeah. doesn't and pay YouTube, much. So, uh, yeah, all those things come to yeah. You know, it's a very uh, difficult to understand algorithm as in, like for example, uh, people mm. think that, you know, uh, Dreams Unlimited have this XYZ amount of views. They might be earning XYZ amount of money. But in reality, the CPI, mm. which uh, cost per mile, CPM, cost per mile, is very different in India rather than the, as compared to other places in the Western countries. And uh, in India, exactly. average is zero point zero five dollar, which is nothing. Mm. Like cost per mile, uh, mi- uh, cost per one thousand views, you know, is like zero point zero zero five or zero mm. five dollar, is really really mm. less. So pe- yeah. it's it's the uh, reverse of what people think so I completely understand your point on that although obviously you'll be making s- uh, some amount in uh, through your YouTube channel but I, I understand <coughs> that it's not much to support a family or you know to support the whole team so yeah because YouTube uh, we mm. we work yeah. as a team so whatever we earn we have to you know distribute exactly. among ourselves it's not uh, if it's just one person doing all that then exactly. maybe that's a different case so that and also you have to take yeah. into consideration the equipment that you have purchased or you know the electrical exactly, exactly. rentals uh, yeah everything every every now and then we have to exactly. upgrade those things also exactly and yeah. and looking at your video you know you have a uh, uh, you have a uh, it i see that the importance of uh, women in our society uh, you know because in most of the video that plays out you know uh, although some people might not recognize mm-hmm. that, but in notice or in the tribal community, women plays a very important role. But despite the fact that our the 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 status of our women in our society I, in in a modern society is not, uh, I would say that uh, it's not very high. So, w- any thoughts on that? What is your comments on that? And you know, do you think that later down the line? we might really need to look at this and then, you know, re- change our thought process behind it. Mm. Uh, things are changing slowly and just today only I read the news that one woman was appointed as um, a very big boss no. I mean, in the village council, some secretary and all in there, so mm-hmm. which has never happened and all. So I've also read in the newspaper this year that one w- woman was appointed like that, which never happened in our mm. uh, society before. So slowly, slowly, like things are changing, and we have we are coming to that understanding yeah. level, you know, like women can do this, women can't be in the positions, women can't be here, and all all, 
all those things are changing like this and with the uh, with modernization and everything our mindset our thinking also change changes so uh, young people I guess mostly uh, young people young generation they, they understand that they know I guess the mentality or the thinking of our parents or elders are also slowly slowly uh, going to that direction. Uh -huh.